Hi there folks, I'm Scott with B&H. Usually this channel focuses on the tools and skills that go into making quality photos and videos, but you probably care just as much about how you watch content as you do about how you make content. You probably have a nice media setup with a big screen, but have you considered a projector? I hope so, because that's what we're gonna talk about today. And by we, I mean myself in this BenQ HT4550i projector. This projector serves as a great example of what features and quality you can expect from a projector in the mid-tier price range. Now, let's start by going over the general pros and cons of using a projector versus a traditional TV screen. The most obvious difference is the size. As of the writing of this script, there are very few TV models that are 100 inches or more, and the ones that do exist are likely to be prohibitively expensive for most enthusiasts. Quality projectors, like the BenQ HT4550i, are more than capable of delivering a 100-inch display at a much lower price point. The second most obvious difference is size. Again, but in a different way. Because while projectors are capable of a 100-inch image, they are also capable of a 200-inch image, or a 60-inch image, and everywhere in between. Projectors are flexible like that, allowing one unit to fit the needs of a variety of spaces. Another admittedly expected finding I took away from this project was that projectors take more time and equipment to set up properly. To project a 100-inch image, this projector has to be positioned between 8 and 10 feet away from the surface. And if you're setting up in a small space, say a New York City apartment, the logistics can get a bit tricky. And if you're renting, you probably won't be able to set up a ceiling mount, which is the ideal way to incorporate a projector into a room. Short throw projectors are a good solution to these problems, but having more limited range of projection sizes can be trickier to properly tune around image distortion, have issues with heating and fan noise, and most importantly, there weren't any around the office when I made this video. It's also worth noting that long throw projectors are often configurable to a handful of positioning options. This HT4550i can be used as a back or front projector and mounted upside down or right side up. There are also a myriad of ways to adjust the size and shape of the image even after the projector is mounted. First, there is a manual lens zoom to help fine tune your image size. It is also possible to shift the lens up to 60 degrees vertically and 15 degrees horizontally. Finally, the keystone adjustments let you correct for any unevenness in the projection. Besides size, size again, space, and effort, the other major factor is lighting. Projectors are actually a little bit easier on your eyes than a normal display. Projectors work by projecting light at a surface and then reflecting it back into your eyes instead of shining light directly into your eyes like a TV screen. The trade-off there is that projectors aren't going to have the same level of contrast as a screen, and external light sources will have a much bigger impact on the viewing experience. Now that was some general advice slash conventional wisdom about projectors. But there are new advancements being made all the time to mitigate the various qualms of projector setups. If I'd been making this video a few years ago, I would have listed the hassle of replacing halide bulbs and how quickly they degrade. But we're living in the age of LED and laser projectors. The HG4550i has an LED bulb. While not usually as bright as halide lamps, LED bulbs are nice because they last a lot longer. And while most LED bulbs have three color channels, R, G, and B, this projector has a four LED light source, meaning it has four channels, R, G, another G, and B. That extra G stands for brightness. Technically, it's an extra green channel, but the channel is used to boost the brightness levels of the projector, which is a pretty innovative way to boost the performance while working within the parameters of the technology. The result is an impressive 3200 ANSI lumens of brightness. The third option, besides traditional halide lamps and LED bulbs, is lasers. Laser projectors have many of the same advantages as LEDs. Longer lifespan, lower energy needs, and fewer heating issues. There are also ways in which laser projectors take the advantages of an LED projector even further, like having more accurate colors and greater contrast ratios. It helps that the average laser projector is capable of brightness levels in the ballpark of 10,000 ANSI lumens, which improves the contrast and makes laser projectors the most functional type of projector for bright environments. It will not surprise you that laser projectors are also significantly more expensive than their LED counterparts. Now, while we're on the topic of advancements, let's talk about how modern projector sensors are designed. A 4K or UHD capable LED projector would have been rather more expensive a few years back. Enter the now common DLP projector. 4K and UHD chips are expensive, while 1080p chips are decidedly less so. 
So DLP projectors, like the HG4550i, will use a technique called pixel shifting where a 1080p chip is fired multiple times per frame, shifting it slightly to fill in more details. Combined with some video processing, the end result is a UHD image. For the most compulsive of pixel peepers, the image quality won't quite match the quality of a native UHD chip in a side-by-side -side comparison, but it does look significantly better than a non-pixel shifting 1080p chip would, while being significantly cheaper than the native UHD alternative. Okay, that was a lot of stuff about projector setup and technology, but that's only half the battle. We have an image bouncing off a surface and into our eyes, but what sort of image are we getting? With decent lighting conditions, the image quality that the BenQ HG4550i provides is beautiful. In fact, you could say that it is certifiably beautiful as THX and ISF certified engineers tune the color settings for the projector to be color accurate out of the box. But if you want to double check their work, let's go through some numbers. This projector sports 100% DCI-P3 and Rec. 709 coverage with 10-bit color allowing for 1.07 billion discrete colors. The contrast ratio is rated at 2 million to 1 with a maximum brightness ratio of 3200 ANSI lumens. To achieve this, BenQ employs 1,000 local dimming zones and their trademark HDR Pro technology, which includes optimal HDR tone mapping, leading local contrast enhancers, and dynamic blacks. Now, if you do wind up wanting to tweak the colors, the HG4550i has a robust amount of user-modifiable parameters. There's also the Cinema Master set of options that lets you configure BenQ's picture enhancement settings. The HG4550i also features a plethora of picture profiles to fit a range of use cases. Starting off, there's the bright setting in case you need to set up the projector in a relatively bright room. The official description of this states that it sacrifices some contrast and color accuracy. Unfortunately, in reality, this picture mode is the only one that you're going to need to correct out of the box. It has a very green tint. Fortunately, there's also the bright cinema mode. Here we are back to the beautiful picture quality that I've come to expect from this projector. This setting is designed to be as bright as possible while retaining accurate colors and pretty deep contrast. And then, as you might expect, cinema mode has accurate colors and the deepest contrast. And then there are separate modes for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and 3D content which the projector will automatically set itself to when it detects those forms of content. That's right, I just said 3D. While a 3D-capable TV hasn't been produced since 2016, some projectors are still 3D-capable, and the HT4550i is decidedly one of those projectors and supports all of the most common 3D formats. So I think that's good news for anyone itching to revisit the hottest cinema trends of the early 2010s. And finally, there is one slot for a user customized picture setting where you can play around with the settings to fit your own tastes. There are two additional toggleable features, filmmaker mode and fast mode. Filmmaker mode supports the cinema standard 24 frames per second and reduces shutter. Fast mode is spec to reduce input lag as much as possible, making it ideal for video games. It's capable of showing 1080p inputs at 60Hz, 120Hz, or 240Hz, while 4K inputs max out at refresh rates of 60Hz. Okay, that brings up another important point. We're filming this in 2023 and not 1923, which means there's more to care about than just the picture, regardless of whether it's from a projector or a TV. So how well does the HG4550i fit into a collective AV setup? Pretty well, it turns out. If you're using a BenQ HG4550i, you'll be working with three HDMI 2.0b ports, one LAN port for internet connection, two USB type A ports, one RS-232 port for Control 4 home automation systems, one SPDIF port, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, let's break some of it down. The HDMI ports are likely to be your bread and butter. These are HDMI 2.0b, which is nice, but unfortunately not as nice as HDMI 2.1. HDMI 2.0b is why fast mode has 4K limited to 60Hz refresh rate compared to the 144Hz that HDMI 2.1 is capable of. Additionally, HDMI 2.0b allows for static metadata HDR modes like HDR10 and HLG, but only supports one dynamic metadata standard, HDR10+. Unfortunately, that means no Dolby Vision. With new-ish formats like HDR, you need to make sure that every piece of your pipeline supports your desired picture preferences. It doesn't matter if your streaming device can output an HDR10 plus feed if your projector or TV doesn't support it. Because Dolby Vision is proprietary, it is the most likely format to not be supported by any given piece of hardware, so that is a thing to keep in mind as you create your setup. 
Another aspect of HDMI options that you should be cognizant of is that the 2.0b standard only sometimes supports eARC, while 2.1 always does. The HD 4550i only has one port that is eARC capable, while the other two only use ARC. ARC, or Audio Return Channel, allows you to pass audio through the projector to an audio receiver or soundbar, but is limited to stereo or compressed 5.1 streams. eARC, the E stands for Enhanced, is capable of much higher bit rates allowing for 7.1 uncompressed surround sound and fancy audio innovations like object-based sound, for example, Dolby True HD, Dolby Atmos, and DTSX. If you need other audio outputs, there is the SPDIF port and the trusty familiar 3.5mm audio jack. Honestly, both of these are outshined by the capabilities of HDMI, but if you're outporting to an older audio device that does not have HDMI ports, well, these have you covered. Most projectors, the HG4550i included, also have built-in speakers. And the HG4550i's 5 watt internal speaker isn't bad in a pinch, but you're definitely paying for a high quality picture with audio sort of tacked on. To do the picture justice, you will be wanting to pair the projector with a dedicated audio setup, and to be clear, that is going to be true of any projector or TV screen. Of course, if you want to, you know, watch something with your home theater, you're probably going to need something that provides something to watch. These days, that usually means some form of streaming device. The BenQ HT4550i comes with an Android TV dongle, which is also made by BenQ. You could use your own Roku, Apple TV, or other preferred device, but this included dongle performs well, matches the capabilities of the projector, and they're clearly meant to be a package deal. There's literally a dedicated HDMI port for it that has protected casing. I want to go back and add in one final distinction between projectors and screens. It's probably why you clicked on this video in the first place. The absolute most important distinction between a projector setup and a TV setup is that projectors are just neat. They really put the theater in home theater. Watching a movie becomes a screening, catching the big game feels like an event, and when the latest must-watch thing comes around, you're probably gonna be the default host so that your friends and family can share in your capital E experience. Also, again, I had a nifty one on hand. So, are you considering investing in a projector setup? If so, do you think the BenQ HG 4550i is going to be your entry into that world? Or maybe you already have a projector-based home theater. If so, let us know about your experience with it, especially if it's with the BenQ HG 4550i. And if you want some more videos about the options and components that go into making a home theater, let us know in the comments. We really do check them, and I would love an excuse to dive deeper. I'm Scott with BH. Keep it fun out there, y'all.